AMI was founded in 2008 on the campus of Georgia Southwestern State University to enlighten the lives, the hopes, and dreams of all our students, particularly African American males. Our mission continues to be the recruitment, the education, the retention, and the graduation of African American males on our campus. Please enjoy our program this afternoon and welcome. Democracy will not come today, this year, nor ever, through compromise and fear. I have much, much a right as the other fellow has to stand on my two feet and own the land. I'm so tired of hearing people saying, let, th let, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Freedom is a strong seed planted in a great need. I live here too. I want my freedom just as you. Good evening, or well, good afternoon, pardon me. Good afternoon. good afternoon. It is my privilege today to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. James Brown. Our speaker for today was born in Montezuma, Georgia and graduated from Macon County High School. Mr. Brown attended our, our own Georgia Southwestern State University and received a BS degree. He attended Fort Valley State University where he obtained his first master's in student counseling. He also attended Troy State University where he received his specialist degree in school counseling. Mr. Brown's work history consists of the following. Admissions counselor of Georgia Southwestern State University, a sales representative for Sprint Communications, Atlanta, Georgia, production manager for Davidson Textron, America's Georgia, admissions counselor for Fort Valley State University, scholarship coordinator for CDEP at Fort Valley State University, counselor at Dooley County High School. Currently, he is the junior senior counselor at Macon County High. While at GSW, Mr. Brown was a member of Sabu and many organizations. He's also a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. He is married to Ms. Sheena Thomas Brown, and they have three sons, Cullen, Corbin, and Caprice Brown. His favorite quote is, not failure, but low aim is sin, by Dr. Benjamin Mays. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm GSW welcome to our very own Mr. James Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was not expecting so many, uh, so that is, that is good. Uh, Mr. Anderson, where are you? Anything in the back? Uh, so that's good for you to be here. I am a graduate of uh, GSW, and a lot of things, a lot of thoughts have kind of toiled in my mind to, to reflect and just reflect it on um, of what I was going to say today. Um, but don't get carried away by, by those degrees and things that I have. Uh, uh, I'm just a plain old country boy from uh, Montezuma, Georgia. Uh, but I wouldn't change anything for the world. I wouldn't change uh, my upbringing. Uh, things happen for a purpose. And then things are brought into your life for a purpose. And, and one of the greatest pleasures uh, that came through being uh, raised in Montezuma, Georgia, little Montezuma, Georgia, on a little 150 acre farm, was to have an uncle who treats you as his uh, own child. And so uh, I want him to stand just, you don't have to stand, but just raise your hand. My Uncle Robert came to me there. Raise your hand, Uncle Robert. That's my Uncle Robert. That's my, that's my Ryan partner and whatnot. We, we, we uh, at basketball season particularly, I, I'm, I'm, I coach football, so I'm on the field during football season. Basketball season, uh, we, we, we uh, go out and catch some, catch some games here or there. But, um, there are a couple of points, and again, I'm still uh, really just thinking now of some of the things, you know, just trying to reflect again about my days here at GSW. But one thing that truly stands out, when I first came as a freshman, is Prance Hall, or did they close that? What did they do at Prance Hall? They just merged that? They demolished it? They, they, yeah, yeah that's, that's probably for the better. Um, uh, there were a couple others that should have preceded uh, Prance Hall. But anyway, when I came here as a freshman, uh, the nicest dorm was Prance Hall. And, and, and so I had the luxury of being on the top floor of, of Prance Hall. I think it was three floors, I believe, if I remember. And so you had a, 
a beautiful view of the campus, of the back side of the campus. That's all you can see with the baseball field and, and across the field. But at any rate, it was pretty good. You live on third floor, and that was, that was good. And the dorm rooms were, were, were pretty nice in, in that particular dorm. But also, the people that stayed on that particular floor were the uh, baseball players. It, it, it was, at that time, I'm not sure whether it still is now, but at that time, uh, there was this very small stint where GSW tried to, which made sense because of where we are geographically and, and because of uh, the years that America's High School uh, was such a dominant force here in the area that GSW tried to uh, bring in football uh, here on the campus. It, it lasted for a very short time. But the two major sports have always been baseball and basketball. I had the pleasure my freshman year to live on the floor whereby it seems like most of the baseball players uh, stayed, which was, again, the third floor of uh, Prance Hall. And, and, and keep in mind that I make no bones. I don't, it doesn't bother me at all to, to say that I'm about as country as you can get. I, I, even though I'm pretty familiar with uh, proper English and understand that the, the correct word is you all, uh, it sounds better just to say y'all. Uh, and I understand that, just as country as I can be, again, raised on a little old farm. So I, I make them bones about that, but I, I, I saw country in its true form when I, when I lived on that floor. One of the first student activities that I was introduced to as my freshman year was when on the weekend, uh, and I decided to stay that particular weekend, and so I was introduced to this activity, that the guys on the floor, baseball players, decided to flood the floor with water. They then mixed in with the water some suds and soap. And I've later found out that that was a traditional activity that was called the Asshole 500. And that just blew me away. To see young men, some naked, some with nothing but underwear, and they would run. They only did half the hall, so they would use the other half of the hall to get a running start. So they would go a running start, and they would slide all the way down the hall to the end. Now, the, the problem with that was, okay, that's what you wanted to do, but the other side of that coin was is that if you had went home that weekend and you didn't get the memo about what was about to happen this weekend, when you came back on Sunday, your floor your room was flooded with soapy water. And uh, luckily I was there, so uh, I put a towel down on my floor and didn't have that problem. Uh, but that is something that I'll never forget uh, my freshman year uh, here at, at GSW. But I have a lot of memories. I have a lot of memories of Forrest being a member of uh, uh, New, De New Delta uh, 100 years ago. Uh, and so um, uh, that was very much. And the other point that I wanted to make today when I thought about what I was gonna say particularly about my experience here at GSW, is that I, I, I have no idea what the history is. Uh, I was very disappointed uh, that events would not allow me to be here, but if you did not know, if you did not get a chance to know him, uh, a gentleman that should go down and should be in the history of GSW should be a Mr. Carl Wilson. Cebu was an organization that he helped get started, and it was the only black organization on this campus during those 10 years that I was here. It is the forerunner to what you have now in this organization. And Mr. Wilson was the catalyst for all of that. Mr. Wilson was all we had as African-American students that when things seemed not to be quite right, when uh, someone would uh, make a gesture or would make a comment or a professor would make a comment that you st step back for a moment and you pause when that professor would make that comment and you were concerned whether or not that comment was specifically directed at you uh, in a specific manner. So for all of us during those years, and for many years after that, Mr. Wilson was all we had, that we felt comfortable 
and being able to go to and listen to. When we talk about the role of your organization now as a part of an organization that helps with the retention, Sabu and Mr. Wilson was the retention. If not for Sabu and Mr. Wilson, there would have been no direct retention of African American students here at GSW. So I, I, I have no uh, knowledge of where he stands or what uh, position uh, he carries in the uh, uh, world history or the total history of GSW, but Mr. Carl Wilson uh, is a, and was an integral part of what was good about GSW for me. And, uh, and I want to make sure that uh, uh, that's acknowledged. Um, what I want to talk about, and, 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 and it said, uh, you know, black history, and so Mr. Anderson kept pulling me for, you know, a theme. So uh, I just said, the future. And, and, and at that point, I had no kind of thought of how I was going to put that together. And so I'm going to try to put it together today and, and, and get to that point. But what I want to basically say today in my, in my, in my comments is that, that as we study and look at history, African-American history, whatever we do in reference to history, clearly understand that history in its basic concept is the study of things that have happened in the past and in some respect things that are currently happening uh, now. When you go and you turn on your evening news and you turn on the channel from Albany or if you like me and whatnot, which you probably not and whatnot in some way, but if you are and whatnot, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much addicted to CNN. And, and because I, wanna know, I don't want to know, I don't want to know that they uh, came. I want to know that they are coming. I want to know before they get to me, they're on the way. So don't tell me about the fact that they've already arrived. I want to know that the ship is still 200 miles out before they arrive. So I kind of prefer CNN. Uh, but either way, whichever newscast you look at, either you're looking at the evening news and they're telling you about events that have happened, past tense, whereby CNN is combining uh, news events that are, are both past and current. And so, but, but either way, there's that last element that's the future tense. So what do you look at, what do you think about when you think about black history? And you think about it from the standpoint that pretty much everything, because of the word that's attached to it, means that these are things that have already occurred. Uh, these are things that have already happened. Even as great as it is that we have our first African-American president, it's already happened. It's, it's an event. It's, it's, it's historical now. It's, it's something that has happened in the past. So where do we go from now? But what, what I would tell you is, is that whatever history it is, you're it. You are the future of history. Whatever you do now, whatever you shall be doing in your, in your lifetime will be the history that's made. And it may not be worthy of, 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 of being put in some historical book in, in some large library. Your history may be the fact that you just were, grew up to be a good father, a good brother, a good mother, a good auntie. That's your history. You grew up to be somebody that took care of somebody else. You grew up to understand that your life it's more than just your life. Your life belongs to a bigger context of things to be. And I see we start out with a poem, and as a counselor uh, and, a, and a mom who was an English teacher, uh, I grew up with poems, and I do like poems. And so I'm going to start uh, today with one of my favorite poems, and I brought uh, copies of these, some of these poems with me if you like copies of them. But one of my favorite poems, and as he said, a quote from it, is from Dr. Mays. And the whole quote goes, as such. It must be borne in the mind that the tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy of life lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace 
to have no stars to reach for. Not failure, but low aim is sin. And, and that so strikes me so much because if you look again as we, as we close out this month in celebration of black history, if you look at all those people who did make the big book, who did make the, the calendar and their pictures are on the calendar of all the great things they did, they all strive to do things that were greater than themselves. They had high aims for themselves and high goals that they set for themselves and they didn't, may not have reached all of them because even Dr. King did not achieve or reach all of his goals before his tragic death. So, so they may not have seen for themselves the completion of all the goals they set for themselves, but because they reached higher than what others maybe could have expected, they achieved so much more. You cannot settle for just being average. We have uh, a slogan at our high school, Macon County High School, and, 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 and I really don't think kids really buy into it, but, but it does mean something, I th it, it really does for me, that we are working hard to be the best for every student to graduate. And, and, and if you are a school system, if you're not working hard for that reason, if, whether you're even an uh, elementary school teacher, at the end of the story, you are working hard to educate those young people so they can one day graduate and receive their high school diploma and move on with their lives. And I just love the, the theme that we have. But here's where we are to understand that the future, guys, all of you are, is in your hands. It is where, it is what you do that's gonna make the determination of so many things. Let me go ahead and get started. I won't, I won't hold you long, believe me. I told Anderson, look, I, I'm not a professional speaker, so you know, you're just gonna get what you got when you get me and everything. I'm, I, who, who knows what, what's gonna come up? But I'm gonna try my best to say something that I hope will impress upon you or leave you with something at least to think about. Paul Lawrence Dunbar's famous poem from Sympathy written in 1899, speaks to the African-American struggle, both past and today. A version or a sharp script from that poem says, I know why the caged bird sings, ah me, when his wing is bruised and his bosom sore, when he beats his bars and he would be free. I know why the caged bird sings. This poem is a song and a prayer of the human struggle to dream just a little dream of freedom and to send up a prayer that we, through hard work and our own God-given talents, can soar beyond those barriers he saw and faced and we still face today to find a new path for the African-American community. Those barriers to our success as a community can only come tumbling down like the walls of Jericho if we face the fact that too many of our youth have become too tempted by modern convenience to nurture their educational opportunities. I told Uncle Robert, one day, and I'm still trying to figure it out myself, I'm just so old school, that at our school, and I understand this is the case at many schools now, that there are actually not any books. There are not any books that you like get to take home. That they have what's called a classroom set, and that you get what's called a workbook to take home. And, and that just kind of blows my mind that you don't have books. Because if, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in school and everything, books weighed 20 pounds. You carry them in your satchel on your back and whatnot. That was an everyday thing. Uh, so, so what goes on in education today, it just kind of confuses me. But we have to hone those talents. We have to be concerned about edu education. Our young people today don't seem to be able to commit 
to the sacrifice required to stay the course, to self-improvement that will lead to economic security. I love to say that there are two forms of suicide. We're all familiar with physical suicide, but physical suicide is just, just simply is what it is. It's when you physically, you physically do something to take your own life. But there is economic suicide. We are as caged today by what we do not do in supporting one another and making the right choices. To break free, to become uncaged, to meet our potential, we must insist and demand with our wisdom from experience that education was and is and always will be the door to freedom as much for ourselves today as it is for the newly freed slaves who sacrifice themselves to attend the Freedmen's Bureau schools. And education was the difference between being cheated on your harvest because you could not read your contract. As it is today in making important decisions and a difference in what you can achieve financially to yourself and later provide to your children. When we don't do our best to be our best, we are not just cheating ourselves, but we are also cheating all the people who love us today. Auntie, mama, granny, grandma, whatever that word is, there is somebody, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from, there is somebody that loves you and wants you to be the best that you can be right here at GSW. They give you that $20 or that $5 or that dollar. Every time you go home, they, 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 they give you this goodie box or this goodie pack or they just give you some money. I had an aunt, 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 aunt Jimmy. And, <laughs> and back in those days, of course, that was 100 years ago and everything, she really thought she was doing something because she gave me a dollar. Well, I would tell you, uh, it might not be true today, but I learned to take a dollar and I could make that dollar do some things. I, I learned the value and the, and the honest goodness of a can of poking beans right here at GSW. It, 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 they, they can make a meal go so long. It is the best meal you can ever have on a Saturday afternoon when the cafeteria is closed. And, uh, uh, and that dollar helped buy many a can of uh, poking beans. But not only do you cheat those people that love you now, but when you cheat yourself, but you also are cheating the future. Who's that future? Your children, your family, your wife, your future daughter, your future son. You know, the old saying goes that money can't buy you happiness. And I'll buy that. I, I, I will accept that to be true. However, and for those of you who are in the room uh, who are married and have families, and I just put it to you like this, and you just can nod your head because I know you're going to agree with me. When mama happy, when the children happy, you happy. So what you do with yourself today is going to have an impact on all those people around you in the future. But it starts today. You have to start today for the future tomorrow. You, each of you in this room, are the creators of a new history that will be written for generations. You are making your history today, each day by the choices you make as proud African-American men and women who take responsibility and hold yourself accountable for the story that will be told to your children, your grandchildren, and eventually your great-grandchildren because history never stops. No one can tell our story but ourselves as as black Americans today, I understand that. I understand that my story and your story that we must face in our community. Many of us have lost touch with the work of our church 
that provides our community an anchor that will see us through tough times. We have lost touch with those values that led our forefathers to survive unimaginable crimes for which there is no, there is no way that they could be compensated. As much as it sounds good to have your 40 acres and a mule, that was a drop in the bucket in relationship to the atrocities and crimes that were committed during those times. 40 acres and a mule was still not enough. But all is not lost. There is much hope for our future because more African Americans own homes and businesses and work in corporate America and government powerhouses than ever before in our history. Let us not take it lightly and just fluff it away that we have the first African American in the White House. Let it not take it upon yourself to take that lightly that you are blessed to be alive to see it and witness that event. It is my prayer that I sing out to you today this evening and to our Lord God above, that as a community of people bound together by our common experiences, that we break free from the bars and chains of crime against one another. That we break free from the bars and chains that see our youth incarcerated in prisons and detention centers in growing numbers. That we break free from the bars and chains that keep us from growing healthy and happy families. That we break free from the bars and chains of generational poverty that we must break free from the bars and chains of a message that is sinister in American society today that a young black man can be shot down due to a fear of a racial stereotype, not based on his content, but simply based on one's hairstyle, tattoos, and the particular music that he listens to. While incarcerated on Robin Island in prison, Nelson Mandela recited a poem, Invictus, to other prisoners and felt empowered by its message. So let me tell you today what kept Mandela's head raised high for 27 years spent in a tiny cramped cell on the Atlantic coast of Africa from which our ancestors sailed into bondage. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fair clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the budgetings of chance, my head is bloody, yet unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I'm going to change that last line for you. I am the master of my fate. But I choose to allow God to be the captain of my soul. We all are the masters of our fate because God blessed us as human beings with the power given to no other creature. No other creature has this, 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 this magical gift but us, human beings, that we have free will, free choice, that any time we can change direction. At any time in our life, we choose to stop whatever we're doing and move in another direction. No other animal can do that. No other animal created by God but us. He gave that to us and, and to us solely, that we have that free will. But with this great power comes great risk. So one must have a guiding light. And that light for me, and I hope for you, is our God Almighty. My Uncle Robert 
says all the time. He's an educator. And he says quite often, there's nothing worse than an educated fool. If your heart is not right, law, 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 what's going to come out of that mind? It is in the heart that makes sure everything else is going all right. By allowing God to be the captain of my soul, I am determined to break the bars and chains of self-imposed cages so we and you can sing a song of hope and confidence that we, our people, a proud and ancient tribe, sustained by the faith in our God, hope for our complete freedom and prayer for our children's future, make a new generation of unconquerable souls and write a new chapter of African-American history. I close with you today with one other poem that I do like, and it is one of my favorites. And it simply says, risk. Risk. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk being called sentimental. To reach out to another is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk showing yourself. To place your ideas and dreams before the crowd is to risk being called naive. To love is to risk being not loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risk must be taken because the greatest risk in life is risking nothing. The people who risk nothing, do nothing, have nothing, are nothing, and become nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they simply cannot learn to feel and change and grow and love and live. Chained by their servitude, they are slaves. They forfeited their freedom. Only the people who risk are truly free. I leave with you today the challenge of taking a risk. Risk being different. Risk taking the opportunity to learn to speak proper English and to write a proper essay. It's OK to write a proper essay. It's OK to use correct grammar. It's all right to know that there's a difference between y'all and you all. It's okay to know that. It won't hurt you. Risk being more than what you were from when you came here. From wherever you came from. The young man that uh, introduced me, I think, uh, was it Tallahassee? Tallahassee, Florida? He left? I think he said he was from Tallahassee, but and they said Via Cordia. But wherever you come from, wherever, wherever your original, original point of reference is, that somehow or another, through whatever circumstances, brought you here to Georgia Southwestern, GSW, you're here. Then risk being more than what you were before you got here. Take a chance at not just being ordinary, to be different. And believe me, it's OK to be just a little bit different, to stand in the gap, to put yourself above, some, above something than just being ordinary, to say to yourself that I am going to be different. I'm going to be that stand up guy. I'm going to be that, that guy that's going to stand in the gap for a young man that father decided that he had to leave not just go to another city, but go to another state at three years old. Stand in that gap, stand in that gap and be somebody for somebody for that young man that 
only had his mother and his grandmother after his granddad died. Be there for that person. I'm going to be that person for my brother, for my niece, for my cousin, for my nephew. Because that is what Uncle Robert did for me. And he was wondering why I was kind of fishing around to make sure he came here today. Because I wanted to take the opportunity in front of everybody in this room to give him the credit. Because for much of what, if there is, anything good in me, much of that has to do with Robert Ladd. But my Uncle Robert is an old man now. But he still gets around. Now, don't, 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 be, don't be fooled by that gray hair and uh, standing back there now. He, he'll move on you real fast. But his time has passed along. He's worked in the fields, literally and figuratively. And he's still doing his part. But there has to be somebody, me included, not leaving myself out of the equation, but there has to be somebody that's going to step up and say, I'm, I'm next. I'm going to step up. And I'm going to lead my life in a manner that somebody else can follow. I'm going to risk not going to jail. I'm going to risk not being incarcerated and losing my citizenship rights to vote. That people die so we could have. I'm going to risk being different. Take a chance, young people. Be more than what you ever dreamed you could be. Because the future is actually with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity very, very much. I would like to give thanks to Jadian for doing the introduction, Dominique for a poem. I'll thank Kamaya later because she's our administrative assistant. Uh, all AMI members, SOB members for being here. One thing you need to do, and I'm talking to all students, you need to be selfish about your education. You need to invest in your future because that's where you're going to live. You will be blessed one day, and that is today, to see something that no one ever saw. And do anybody know what that is? Tomorrow. No one has seen tomorrow on this earth. So make sure when you go into tomorrow, you are the best person that you can be. You have did the best as a student. You have did the best as a true person. We will have more programming like this for the rest of the year. And our administrative assistant have something to tell you. Good afternoon. We thank each and every one for coming out. Like Mr. A said, we will have more programs like this in the near future. Um, we do have refreshments for y'all. If you could please exit out this door on my left, go around and come back in um, on the door on my right and we will serve you. Again, we thank you so much for coming out.